You're listening to an extract of the Leader Podcast. You can find us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Ross is with me now. And Ross, in your interview with Sean, did he strike you as a candidate who thinks he's going to lose? Sean Bailey, to be fair to him, gave quite a bravara performance yesterday. He seemed entirely relaxed. He's actually, you know, on a human level, he's quite a likable chap. He's um, been cast, his own PR man said, as something of the pantomime villain. And uh, his critics have consistently dug up some rather embarrassing or foolish or downright offensive comments we could say that he's made in the past when he was working either as a, a youth worker or for David Cameron in 10 Downing Street as a sort of youth and crime advisor. Since he became uh, the mayoral candidate for the Tories, he's been much more cautious, but he does still have a bit of a tendency to rather put his foot in it. Now, the latest stories are around his campaign revolve on two things, or around two things. One is that apparently Tory donors have been rather shy in coming forward with open checkbooks and there's been a, a general lack of enthusiasm for his campaign. And the other is he uh, made a rather unfortunate, or certainly according to critics, uh, intervention in the Sarah Everard case prior to police bringing charges there when subsequent to her disappearance he was accused of politicising uh, the uh, the kidnap and disappearance of, of Sarah Everard. So in terms of, you know, put it to Sean, you know, what is the state of your campaign? Are you confident you're going to make it over the line that you can regain this enormous gap that Sadiq has built up? And he, he, um, he was confident, he felt that basically now uh, with the, the campaign uh, sort of formally opening on Monday, uh, and as things move slightly away from COVID, he would get a better hearing and people would concentrate more on the issues than on COVID uh, in particular. And he basically said that any uh, negative coverage he had had recently in terms of his own campaign or, or what he said was down to mischief in the papers, as he said. He has previously com com complained that um, the papers are biased and he towards Sadiq. He said there are too many left-wing journalists who um, want to uh, give Sadiq an easy ride and are not keen to big him up, as he, he said in his own way. I've had a great time because I've been able to garner support from people who traditionally wouldn't even vote. I rate the, the campaign because we've been able to reach deep into communities. I've spoken to all manner of groups from you know female pressure groups to religious groups to, to people who are into... Um, urban wildlife. I've just spoken to everyone and it's been um, it's been really interesting. So given there is or appears to be according to the polling such a huge gap between Sadiq Khan and Sean Bailey right now, what are the avenues for attack available to Sean? Where's he going? Where does he think the weaknesses are in the mayoral campaign? So Sean believes that Sadiq's record is weak and he is going to focus on three areas, crime, housing and transport. And particularly on crime, obviously, we're well aware of the number of knife crime incidents and the number of murders over Sadiq's term. If you look at what's happened in London, the big thing is crime. And my specific plan to target crime, you can break down into two categories. So one is policing and, and the other is societal. That's why you hear me talk about 8,000 extra officers on the street. It's why you hear me talking about putting CCT cameras on every bus stop so women and girls can feel safe in London. But also, you also see me looking at the other end, providing 4,000 youth workers in London and 32 youth zones. However, the interesting thing is that the poll, the standard did a few days ago, asked about these, asked this sample of more than 1,000 Londoners what they thought were the key issues. Londoners said the number one issue just now was COVID, the pandemic and health, the state of NHS, which is perhaps not surprisingly, but also inter interestingly, it said crime was the second most important issue for London going forward. However, the bad news for Sean in that poll was that he underperformed Sadiq in all of these issues. So even though Sean thinks Sadiq is weak here, Londoners don't seem to agree. They think Sadiq's actually got slightly better uh, policies for tackling crime, uh, improving the supply of housing and uh, keeping transport on track. And we've had this wildcard entrant from Lawrence Fox. Is that likely to impact Sean Bailey's voting at all? Is he going to pull any supporters away from him? If Lawrence Fox was going to get votes from anywhere, you would think it would be more from sort of right-wing Londoners than left-wing Londoners. Now, our polling uh, didn't indicate any support at all for Lawrence Fox. Basically, there are many uh, less-unknown candidates who together polled just about 2%. 
uh, even UKIP. I think Lawrence Fox is certainly making a bit of a noise on social media, but I think it's highly unlikely that he would come second and then end up in a runoff with Sadiq. So the way the, the voting system works is that people could quite happily vote Lawrence Fox one and Sean Bailey two, and then Sean would get their top up votes. But I think really Lawrence Fox is just a little bit of entertainment in the the whole sort of um, the circus of the mayoral campaign, if you like, rather than a serious contender either to Sean coming second or to Sadiq coming first as, as things currently stand. All of this being said and, and the polls notwithstanding, after the interview with the Sean Bailey, you, uh, you met someone who's pretty convinced he's going to win, didn't you? That's right. Well, you know, the interview took a couple of parts yesterday. Sean was very generous with his time, to be fair to me. He came into the Evening Standard offices in Kensington. He's, he's an East London lad. He, he made the trek over uh, and he was very happy. He gave us a lot of time, happy to chat. And uh, we decided to do the sort of second part of the interview when I was joined by my colleague, Susanna Butter. We went out to a little garden round the back of High Street Kensington. And just to say on that, as we crossed the road, I did ask him, um, you know, the cycling in High Street Kensington having been quite an issue, whether should he become mayor, whether he would reintroduce it. And he said, Elizabeth would kill me if I did. And by Elizabeth, he means Elizabeth Campbell, the leader, the Tory leader of Kensington and Chelsea Council. So sadly, no good news there. But the most curious thing that happened really was they were sat down in this little park just behind the Ivy Brasserie restaurant, David, that I'm sure you frequent often in the old days. And uh, all of a sudden, entirely out of the blue, this sort of middle-aged lady came up and said, oh, Sean, Sean, can I have a picture? I love you. And Sean said, of course, I'm happy to do a picture. No problem, as long as we keep socially distanced. And then they, they did this little selfie together, had a little bit of fun. And then this lady said, Sean, you're going to be the next mayor. I predict you're going to win. And uh, she said, I know you will win. I'm a clairvoyant. And I said, are you really a clairvoyant? And she said, yes. And her friend who was with her then got her business card out. And uh, indeed, her name was Madame Vanya. So she predicts a Sean Bailey victory. So um, if it's in the tea leaves, then Madame Vanya is the one to follow. Never mind the posters, follow the clairvoyant instead. You can see the video of Ross's interview with Sean Bailey at standard.co.uk, where you'll also find more analysis. 